Well, while my PowerPoint is being pulled up, I like to start all my sessions by asking a question to get us warmed up in a week. So I'm going to ask you all to raise your hand if you learned something new yesterday. Uh, our yesterday's panelists. So the question is, did you learn anything new? Keep your hand up if you did. All right, now I want you to nope, keep them up. <laughs> I want you to look around the room and give someone a high five if you learned something new. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good morning. I, I hope we're all awake now. So I'm, I'm Erin Moore. I'm a district director with MSU Extension. And before I get started on this really interesting topic, which builds off what we spoke about yesterday, I want to tell you about my role in the organization. MSU Extension is a very large organization with 600 employees statewide, and I am a local district director. So as our director, our director of the Agriculture and Agribusiness Institute, Ron Bates, mentioned yesterday, we divide Michigan into 14 districts. So I manage one of those districts, District 7. So uh, the primary function of my job is to identify issues in the district and in the counties that make up that district, and then establish and grow partnerships that advance the work of MSU Extension and expands the reach of all of our agriculture and educators, all the educators across our four institutes. So there are 54 people working in our district, in District 7, and they work in health and nutrition, they work in agriculture and agribusiness, uh, children and youth development, and community food and environment. So right here on the map, Ottawa County is this gray area, or sorry, District 7 is this gray area right here, and our Ag Incubator is located in Ottawa County, which is where you see that blue star. So Ottawa is one of the top producing Ag Counties in Michigan, and one of the most diversified Ag Producing Counties in the whole United States of America. So uh, I'm going to briefly go over the history of how Acre Ag has established an Ag Incubator, but more importantly, I want you to understand what the role of MSU Extension has been with that partnership. I'll then go over a little bit of our lessons learned, because that's very important in the pilot project, because we are, uh, as of late in 2018, early 2019, we are shifting the director, the direction that we're going with uh, the establishment of an agriculture accelerator. So for the history of this ag incubator, in 2010, local governing body, the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners, created this incubator to produce jobs in the county. And they wanted to do something new and innovative because they didn't want to cut into any of the other economic development activities that already existed. So they received a grant from our federal funder, the United States Department of Agriculture, for a market needs and feasibility study. But rather than what is traditionally done is invest in space and capital assets, they invested in a in dedicated staff who then commercialize, license, and sell client technology. So they had their grand opening in 2014, and they had investments from the state of Michigan with $500,000. They had investments from local businesses and private sector sponsors. Their, their mission is to be a place to grow a fertile ecosystem in which to cultivate ideas, whether that idea is equipment, whether that idea is machinery or a software program. It just had to be any innovation that would ultimately benefit the agricultural industry. So MSU Extension plays two primary roles with the Ag Incubator in Ottawa County. The first is with outreach and referral. So my colleagues yesterday, and you'll hear us say it all day today as well, we have the history and the relationships in the counties. We have developed those relationships over decades. So the agricultural community trusts us, trusts MSU Extension, and we provide that linkage to new partners like Acre Ag Tech, which is a private, a private business. So we do outreach, we go farm to farm, and we can First, tell about Acre Ag Tech, what their mission is, explain the process that they, of the incubator, and um, look for local innovations that we can then refer to Acre Ag Tech to business developers. The second way we work with the, the incubator is to vet ag products as they come into the incubator as a third-party, non-biased entity. So our connection to experts across all of these ag fields make us uniquely positioned to vet these ideas. Additionally, MSU Extension, as I mentioned, is a non-biased entity. So we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but because we do not have, we're not profit-driven, so we can do research-based, have research-based, evidence-based input into these processes. 
Uh, we are vital to that process because the farmer or the grower or the uh, processor would have equity in the product. The investor would have equity in the product. Acre Ag Tech would have equity in the product. MSU Extension does not have equity in, this pro in any product that goes through the incubator, and so we become vital uh, in providing that input. So with every pilot project, there are uh, challenges. So I do want to share one of those challenges with you all. We had a, a farmer who developed a small anaerobic digester. And it was a, a, a wonderful uh, innovation because it was very inexpensive. He designed it with off-the-shelf equipment, like a refrigerator uh, motors or small heaters. It was very inexpensive. His patentable idea was that the digestion of the organic material would happen in three to four days rather than the average 21 days. So if you can move product through quicker, you'll have uh, more revenue and be able to generate more revenue from this particular product. So uh, the issue that we found was that there was no data to verify the farmer's claim that this digestion could happen in three to four days. He had a shoestring budget and he did not have the money to, to do the research to make sure that that claim could be verified. So our MSU Extension Educator worked with uh, campus, our resources on campus. We have an anaerobic digester research and education center. So together they developed a protocol uh, to test this process in a lab. The problem was the investor didn't want to pay for the, the testing. So consequently, we were able to move this product forward, even though we do, MSU Extension believes this is a great product, it could be marketed well, it, it fell short because we couldn't find the money. So we have lots of lessons learned from this pilot program. The, the successes are we grew our reputation in this county. We have a reputation for being trustworthy. We have the county government uh, has a reputation for investment in their farmers and their growers and for uh, innovation. We have created a successful public-private partnership between Acre Ag Tech, Ottawa County, which is the uh, government agency, higher education, which, M which is MSU Extension, as well as business developers and, and investors. However, the challenges were many. We had a scarcity of local innovations. This is something we talked about yesterday, how important local innovations are. However, in this particular circumstance, we went too local. There weren't enough innovations to try to bring forward to the incubator. We also had difficulty bringing all these different ent entities to work together. Now, I realize that this is something that we're going to continually improve because it's, it's vital to the process to have all these partners at the table. One major challenge we had is finding differentiation between products to make them patentable. So, for the anaerobic digester, we needed to have enough of a difference between another product to make that patentable, uh, to find investors willing to put money in. And lastly, as I mentioned, we did have inconsistent funding. So we are shifting directions, and I'm very excited to, to say that we are launching the Acre Ag Tech Accelerator in 2019. We are already well into this process. The Acre Ag Tech Accelerator, what it's going to do, it's going to maintain a list of challenges and uh, wishes that, that have been identified by commodity groups, by processors, by farmers and growers, and then Acre Ag Tech is going to publicize that list globally, internationally, to attract uh, international uh, innovators to, to get the best ideas into the county and into the state of Michigan. So applicants will then be reviewed by the business sector partners and some will be accepted into a 12 week long curriculum program that's going to be based in Ottawa County. So that curriculum program will have mentors from both inside and outside the ag industry and the business sector, and they'll be able to visit farms and see how their innovations and their business practices or business philosophies would be applied locally in uh, Ottawa County. So again, I want to emphasize the role that MSU Extension plays. We are a partner at this table and an essential one. MSU Extension is developing the survey that we are uh, implementing with our growers, farmers, uh, commodity groups, processors. And again, it's because we have that reputation that we're able, that the growers and farmers, they trust us. They trust the survey coming to them and they will participate because of our reputation with them. 
So we are sending the survey out to 56 commodity groups across the state of Michigan. Where we are in the process right now, we developed the survey in November of 2018, and it's being updated and um, drafted through the end of February. It's going to be implemented starting in March and April, and then we're going to collect and analyze the data that comes through that survey, publicize the needs of uh, wish lists and challenges to the innovator community, and start the application process next August. So some of the questions that we ask in this survey is, does your organization provide traceability of your product? Uh, what percent of your commodity is used for food? If it's not just used for food, what ideas do you have to use it for, for a different product? This is my favorite question. If you had a magic wand, what solution or technology would most benefit your industry or group? And if that technology existed, what would be the annual projected uh, annual financial impact to your organization? So the hope is, by shifting directions, by asking ahead of time what the issues are, that we'll be able to attract more investors to the products that come through this accelerator. <coughs> So with that, I'm, I'm all finished. Unfortunately, I don't have the data to say that this accelerator will work, but I'm hoping that next year, at this same conference, we'll be able to tell you our lessons learned from this process. Thank you.